Good morning, guys. This video is about five things you should not be throwing away in the kitchen right now. With less opportunities of going to the grocery store, with us being more aware of saving our resources and using what we have on hand, I thought this video was very fitting for times like this. I use these ideas even when we're not at home and can't go to the grocery store a lot, but I want you to start thinking of how you can use your kitchen scraps or your food waste and turn them into something amazing and beautiful and feed your family with it and be more environmentally friendly and just be really aware of, of the amount of food that we waste, okay? If you want to take a, a notebook out and a pen, great to take notes. If you don't and you just want this for inspiration, that is great too. Um, okay, so first things first. So just picture this, okay? You have strawberries in your fridge that look really sad and you can't really use them to eat them fresh. Yeah, you can make a jam, but then you've got to add a ton of sugar to your jam. Yeah, you can make strawberry pie, but you don't have enough strawberries for them. I'm gonna show you a great way to use mushy strawberries that don't have a home and it's an easy and cheap way to use this. Okay, so I've got strawberries that look mushy, not all of them. And I also um, get frustrated when I cut off the tops of the strawberries, but there's some strawberry flesh left on it. Um, so I'm gonna cut off the tops of these. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So this is our strawberry. I'm just cutting off the green part and the bad part. Can't do much with that, they're just really soft. I'm gonna cut them into quarters, including the top, and I'm gonna put them in a water pitcher. And what we're gonna do is, guess what? We're gonna make strawberry infused water. So you can pretend you're at a spa right now and uh, you have made strawberry infused water. So mushy strawberries or the tops of the strawberry, the green part, don't throw them away. Always make some sort of fun strawberry infused water. So I'm just going to Keep the ones that are still good, that are edible, that I can eat. Cut the tops off, save that to eat. But then again, not throwing away the tops of my strawberries. I put the mushy ones in there, but I kept the firm ones to eat, okay? So I'm gonna finish with this. I'm gonna get some cold water with some ice and you're gonna see how delicious this looks. Now for you vodka drinkers out there, you can also put in vodka, no water let it sit for a couple of weeks and you have strawberry infused vodka. But strawberry infused water with the strawberry tops that you never want to throw away or the mushy strawberries that you just don't know what to do with, okay? Tip number two is save your veggie scraps for vegetable stock or chicken stock. Now, ironically, I made stock yesterday so I don't have my bag, but I'm gonna show you the vegetables that you're gonna save to make your own stock. And then I'm gonna share a quick ratio um, for you to use for when you make your stock, okay? So you can save the fronds of the celery. So these tops of celery have great flavor. The bottom part of the celery, when you cut it, chop it up and you can save that for stock, okay? The tops of the tomato or any discards of tomato, if you seed your tomatoes, save the seeds for the stock. The peel, the papery part of the onion or the end part of an onion when you're cutting and you wanna save your finger, that goes in stock. Carrots, um, these are baby carrots. I don't have regular carrots, but carrot peels or carrot ends do really well as well. Garlic, garlic peels go into stock. Any herbs of your choice, the stems, the sad leaves, lemon. So when you squeeze a lemon and you have the skin and the zest left, you're gonna save that for your stock. Another one that you might not know is an apple core, okay? An apple core is great for stock as well. Uh, so just giving you some ideas of how to do this, you're gonna wanna fill up a Ziploc bag with all those scraps. Like I said, the celery scraps, the onion scraps, the carrot scraps, the garlic scraps. And you are going to wanna boil all that together with a couple of leaves of bay leaves and some black peppercorns and some salt and pepper. You're gonna bring that up to one boil and then you are going to go ahead and cook that stock low and slow for two hours, okay? So really easy. Once the stock is ready, you strain it out and you put it in your fridge for absolutely anything, for a soup, for a stew, to cook in rice, 
to give flavor to your quinoa or to your barley. Make vegetable stock or chicken stock your best friend in the kitchen to elevate any simple dish to make it a delicious flavor. The other thing that you can do, I just forgot to mention, is mushroom stems. You can go ahead and save your mushroom stems as well. Things that you cannot put in stock are broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. They don't really go well with stock. Potato peels, sweet potato peels, um, don't work well in stock either. Okay, so just an FYI about that. Third tip is tea bags. If you're like me, you drink tea once a day or twice a day. And so what happens is you have a tea bag that's already used, right? So just pretend this is a used tea bag and you shouldn't throw it away. And I'll tell you why. Two reasons why. First is I don't know if you guys know, but the tea leaves have a ton of flavor. So let's say this was black tea or a chamomile tea or a lemongrass tea. You're gonna cut open your tea, your tea bag, okay? Just like this. And you're gonna take out the tea leaves. So this is a used tea bag. You're gonna sprinkle this on top of your rice for a tea infused rice next to a curry dish. You're gonna sprinkle this in a rice pudding for a chamomile infused rice pudding, okay? It's edible. Once you cook this for a long time, your tea leaves are edible. If you make homemade ice cream, your used tea leaves go into the base of the homemade ice cream. If you want, before you cut it, you can drop a lemongrass um, tea that you drink, the whole tea bag, the used tea bag, you can put it into your Thai curry, okay? So just think out of the box. And I think times like this allow you to think out of the box and you should. So a tea bag is a secret weapon for a ton of flavor. Now our fourth tip that you might uh, know or you might not know, I don't know, is lemon. So lemon, orange, lime, grapefruit has a ton of flavor, but I truly don't think that you should waste the zest. And so what happens here is you can zest your lemon like you would with a microplane if you want, but let's say you forgot, okay? Let's say you didn't need lime zest or lemon zest for a recipe, you would go ahead and before you cut it in half to juice it, you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna peel off your lemon, just like this. And then what you're gonna do, okay, is you are going to get a parchment lined tea tray and you're gonna actually uh, crisp up your lemon and then you're gonna sprinkle a couple of options here, okay? Some salt, or some sugar, depending on what you're gonna use this for, on your lemon peels, chop them up and save them for amazing flavor boost, like citrus flavor boost, okay? So when you cut your lemon, don't worry about being too perfect, but you wanna make sure you don't get too much of the white part because that's uh, that's bitter. Um, so I've got my parchment lined tea tray. I'm gonna go ahead, put my lemon just like this, okay? Now it's all up to you. I think I'm gonna use this as a sprinkle on vanilla ice cream or a coconut ice cream because I love that flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take sugar versus salt. If you wanted to do salt, you could, and then you could chop it up for your salad. Oof, what an amazing um, flavor punch. You can use it as a, as a garnish for a lentil soup. I'm just saying, okay, so we've got some sugar about a tablespoon of sugar. Nothing crazy. And I really don't want you to be spending a lot of time in the kitchen when you're trying to save your scraps, right? The whole point is this is supposed to be easy. So now you can either use ghee, you can use butter, you can use uh, olive oil. I think olive oil and lemon will be delicious. So I'm gonna do that. And now I'm gonna toss this together and put it in my oven at 325 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once they're nice and cooled, then I'm gonna chop it up, okay? The other thing that you could do is you can actually uh, make sure they're nice and cooled and you can actually put it into your food processor and make little sweet lemon crumbles for like a margarita or something, okay? There it is. And now you have a lemon. 
that you didn't waste the skin and we have delicious juice in here. So this is fitting for my next tip, okay? My next tip is pesto is your best friend in the kitchen. And I'll tell you why. When it comes to scraps, especially of herbs, stems, carrot tops, beet tops, arugula that's wilted and old, baby spinach that's wilted and old, you want to make sure that you save that stuff and you make a pesto out of it, okay? Because anything you put in a in a pesto recipe will taste absolutely amazing. So don't think just basil, okay? Think above and beyond that. So I've got my blender and I have some chive ends that were like a little bit yellow on the bottom that I'm not gonna chop off. I've got some parsley that was looking really sad. It's curly parsley and I tend to use less curly parsley in my kitchen. I do for garnish, but not for cooking. And then I had dill and the dill was looking super sad. So I just had this in water because I washed these herbs a couple of times. You can put in cilantro stems or parsley stems and everything here has a stem on, okay? So this is, this is a lot, I'm just saying, this is a lot. And you could also split this in half and use half of this for my stock bag and the other half I'll do for pesto, okay? Stem and all. So half here for pesto, half for the stock. We've got our herb stems and greens. Again, you can do arugula or kale, whatever you want. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the juice of half a lemon. This lemon isn't as juicy as I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the whole lemon. That's about two tablespoons. Saving this for stock, right? Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in some olive oil. If you are watching your calories these days, which I totally get, you can actually put less olive oil and a little bit of hot water in your pesto. Just saying, you know what I mean? The flavor might not be there exactly, but it could still be delicious. Got some olive oil. And I use pesto with eggs, sandwich, pasta. I use it as a sauce for grilled veggies. So about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. I mince up garlic, garlic at the beginning of the week. That's my hack. So about three cloves of garlic. The next thing, my salt. So a nice handful of salt. If you're vegan, you're gonna skip this step, but you can add nutritional yeast. If you're not vegan, you can use Parmesan cheese. So about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, or you can do half nutritional yeast, half Parmesan cheese if you don't want so much cheese, you know? That looks about a fourth of a cup to half a cup. There's no right or wrong, right? This is called um, whatever green pesto you have on hand, right? And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add two tablespoons of nuts. And I don't want you to stress on what type of nuts. You could do walnuts, you could do pine nuts, you can do almonds. A traditional pesto is pine nuts, so I have some pine nuts on hand, about two tablespoons. And it's gonna get a little loud in here. We're gonna go ahead, there it is. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cover this up and blend really well, okay? To this, oh, I forgot, I'm gonna add some black pepper. You know, there's no right or wrong. It's not, um, it's all up to you. So here it is, my herb stem pesto wilted herb situation that's going on. I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna blend this, it's gonna be loud. So it seems like my pesto needs a little bit more oil. And the crazy thing about this, just to tell you, depending on your blender, you might not get everything to be really pureed because the stems tend to be a little tough, but that's okay. It'll be a more texture pesto that has some texture to it. That's still gonna be great, okay? So let me just do this one more time. This looks really good. When I end this video, I'm gonna actually add more oil, but it's gonna take me some time, so I definitely don't wanna have you hang out here forever with me, although I, I want you to, but I also know you have things to do, okay? So this is our pesto, it's nice and chunky. Again, I have to, um, mm, yum. The herbs, the lemon, and the garlic are amazing. I have to add a little more oil, and I don't wanna add too much oil, so I'm gonna add some water to it and blend it really well for about four to five minutes, but I'll do that off the camera, off the video, okay? So that's the fifth, fifth hack, okay? Make pesto your best friend and you can make pesto absolutely out of any green. 
except for romaine and cabbage. So let's pretend that the lemon is done because I just want you to take a quick peek at it. I still have 12 minutes left. But again, at 325, do you see this? Like they're getting nice. Ooh, this smells so good. Nice and caramelized. You're gonna let this cool really well because they're gonna harden. And then you're gonna chop it up for a really nice little oomph in your salad or garnish in your soup. And today we're having lentil soup here. So yeah, I'm gonna put this back in. Another 11 minutes. And if your oven is very strong, I would suggest you do it at 300 and not 325, just saying, because it could burn. So there it is. Tip number one is make strawberry water with the tops of your strawberry. Number two is save your veggie scraps, okay, for vegetable stock. Tip number three is citrus peels or zest to make candied, well, it's not traditionally candied, so I hate to use that word, but roasted uh, citrus peels for savory or sweet dishes. Tip number four is a tea bag is a, a secret flavor power thing in things like rice and grains and desserts and soups and whatnot. So that's the save the tea bag. And tip number five is make pesto your best friend and save it with to use your leftover greens, your sad greens, your stems of the herbs, you know, whatnot. So I'm gonna try my strawberry water. Yum. I've made this for the kids a ton in the summer and um, I have it sit overnight because then it tastes even better. So stop spending money on those infused waters. Now you know how to make them. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for the five things that you don't want to throw away in your kitchen video. A little long, but packed with flavor. I will see you on Facebook, on Instagram, on my website, wannabechef.com. We have tons of virtual classes for kids and adults. And we run Cooking Power Hour. It's not technically an hour, but I call it Power Hour because it sounds fun. Once a month. So make sure you share your email and you sign up with us so you can uh, get dibs on the next one. Bye.